Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another edition of what is in our stand today. So today what we're going to do is replace this fork, and I'll tell you the story why, this fork with this fork, but we'll need these tools as well. So let's do a little bit of history. This fork, um, I mean, I can do fork rebuilds and stuff like that, but it's time consuming. I have to order the parts. I have to, so normally I just outsource that. And the fork was, um, the repair could not be done all the way. So it was going to be too expensive. This is a brain fork from Specialized. So the, the customer said, you know what? I just need a rigid fork. Let's just do that. I don't need suspension anymore. I don't ride crazy. I don't do that kind of riding anymore. I just ride with my, my kids and that's it. So I don't really need a suspension fork and I don't need a new suspension fork. I just ride hard packed trails and I'm just riding with my kids. So we sourced this Richie fork. Now, this is inch and a half. This is inch and an eighth. Now, I was given some bad information. It happens. And you know, when something's not your specialty, you lean on other people. It's just the way it is. It's possibly why you're on this channel or this video because you're just trying to get some... So you're trying to do some research. So I was told, oh, all you have to do is get a one and a half inch, I'm sorry, one and an eighth um, crown race. This is a straight steer tube and a <clears throat> campy bearing and this part. And this is a 2009 dash or 2009 which i guess applies to 2009 and by the way this is a specialized um stump jumper you know hardtail so the the bad information comes in the fact that well the uh, i can't find the packaging right now but this didn't go in all the way and the bearing race, and this is a carbon head tube, the bearing race is preventing this from going in any further. So this has to come out and then, um, well, <laughs> yeah, the bearing that we were trying to put in here, all that is just bad information. So we're gonna take this out. We are going to remove the crown race on that Ritchie fork and then we're going to install some Cane Creek parts. Now, Cane Creek, um, I have to give them the props for this because they're like, oh, wait a minute, you don't need an adapter, you don't need this, you don't need that. All you need is this crown race that we have here and we make a bearing that's going to reduce um, all of this, but not really reduce it. So that's, let me show you what I mean. So these two parts here, if you look here, you'll get the part number and you can pause at any time so that you can um, research that part, okay? And then this other part here. So one is the crown race and this is the bearing. So go ahead and pause that and get your, your part numbers. So what we're going to do is this crown race will fit on the inch and an eighth fork and then you can still use an inch and a half bearing to go inside the frame so this is like you know 52 millimeters or something like that od okay so you can see that that mates up really nice it's got a nice little seal as well so this is going to be a nice setup for the customer all right, so the first thing we need to do is, well, let's get rid of this fork. 
because it can't be used. The first thing we're going to have to do is remove this crown race. And this is a crown race puller. Now, if you don't do this often, you might as well just go to a bike shop and let them do it for you. Because do you really want to buy this tool and have it home? So I will at some point do a must have tools for your home. And then the tools that would be nice to have. And then the tools that don't even bother owning these tools. Just go to the bike shop and pay for the service. So this is a tool that I'm not so sure everyone needs to have as a home mechanic. So the way this tool works is slide this. Well, first let's make sure that these are open as much as possible. And what you're going to do is these little claws will get underneath the crown race. And if you look inside here, that when you push that onto the steer tube, you're pushing down on the steer tube and it's going to lift the crown race off of the fork. So we put this guy in here like this and go all the way down. And if you would, sir, eventually you're going to have to zoom in down here as those claws get up and underneath the crown race. Let me know if you're, if you're able to capture this. So I need to come down a little bit. And so you start just dialing these in. See that? So you're trying to get that guy there. And we turn this around so that the cameraman can Get a shot at this. All right, so that claws in. Now let's see this guy. Okay, how does that look? So you know, this is 360, so divided by three, right? So about 120 degree angle on all of these. All right, so if, if you don't get this centered, you're going, going to be pulling on it too much on one side and too little on the other side and you might damage something. And maybe you might wanna use this crown race for something else, right? All right, so here we are, we're screwing these in. Just like anything else that you torque, you screw a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other side. And when you start to see that claw actually get good purchase on that crown race, and this being a carbon fork, you just want to make sure that you're, you're really getting, or, you know, it's a carbon top crown, I guess you'd call it, right? So this guy is not... Not perfectly underneath. Now, you've got wrench flats here, but you should be able to just 
do as much as you can because like any other any other thing that you do you want to make sure it's hand tight first And this is a six just for those keeping track. And you should be able to start seeing it lifting. And you want these claws to do most of the work because you don't want to screw this part down and damage the fork the top of the of the steer tube, right? So you want to, you want these claws to do most of the heavy lifting. See what I did there? Okay, that should be good. So now we slowly There it is. Okay, and now what we want to see and ensure that this fork is not damaged in any way, right? So we're good to go there. Now, we need to press the other crown race on there. So here's the crown race. Put that on there. We have this adapter. which will go there. And you'll see that the marking on that is inch and a half. So get that guy on there. And every mechanic should have a hammer at home. Okay. Now we want to put this guy on. good what we're looking for is that it's on there still see a little gap so we're going to go a little bit more bottoms out okay so we've done that now the last thing that we have to do is get this errant adapter because well that's the wrong adapter so what we're going to do let me see what size I need to get that guy out oh that's not gonna fit Let's see, I guess if we're careful, we can just pound this guy out. There it is, that's out. And now, we take that bearing, slap that in there, and of course, we check that it makes sure it fits inside the head tube, right? So, that's 
gonna go in there just like that. And then we'll put the um, stem on there and that job is done, right? So there's a little bit of play, but that's because the top bearing's not in there yet, which of course, we're not gonna waste any video time on that. But this is how you convert a one and a half inch to a one and an eighth inch um, steer tube type fork if you want to use a different fork than what was originally specced on your specialized uh, stump jumper. And the customer believes this is a 2013. So we're gonna go with that, a 2013. Now, specialized, when I call them, they wouldn't help me because, well, I'm not a specialized an authorized specialized dealer. But I get a lot of specialized bikes in my shop. Well, I mean, you know, Specialized, Cannondale, Trek, these are the biggest brands. And so of course there's a lot of these bikes out in the um, consumer market. So, but uh, the other challenge was that when I gave him the serial number, well, I couldn't give him the serial number, sorry. And the serial number is underneath here and if you would, sir, see if you can get that right there. I don't know what angle you'll need, but the brake line has been rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. So that serial number is gone. And then this gentleman has an SRM power meter on here and SRM power meters need a magnet. And of course the magnet is covering the serial number on the bottom bracket. So I couldn't give him the serial number. The customer believes it's a 2013. We went with that, but they still couldn't give me any help and they wanted to. And the customer says, look, I don't want to go to the specialized dealer. I want you to do the work. I trust you. So that's kind of the way it is a lot, uh, oftentimes. Anyway, that's all for today. If you found some value out of this um, conversion, please put a comment down below say wow i never knew we could do that or you know like share obviously we want other people to see this video because i was given bad information and i want to provide to you my viewers the correct information on how to do this conversion please like and subscribe and in the meantime we'll see you up the road